Hey everyone, welcome back to the Fix or Repair DIY channel. We just got into the month of December, so the temperatures are starting to drop. And this puts an additional strain on your battery, especially if you take a lot of short trips or if you drive infrequently. So in this video, I'm gonna show you what kinds of problems that a discharged battery can cause, how to monitor for this problem, and what you can do to stay out of trouble during the colder months. Now, I always like to start by identifying what the problem is to begin with. Our trucks have turned into rolling three-ton computers, and they simply won't work without adequate DC power. This is obviously important during operation, but it's also equally important to have stable DC power when the truck is dormant. While in operation, while you're moving, the charging system can help produce the missing power to keep the truck running. We're all familiar with this. If you have a weak battery, you can get a jump start. And if you have a satisfactory charging system, you can drive infinitely as long as you keep the engine going as the charging system will help produce that power. But while the truck is dormant, the 12 volt battery system is the only thing allowing your truck to start up. When the weather gets cold, you may often get no warning before the battery goes dark and takes down many of your startup systems. Now, the truck has a lot of system protections that will monitor that state of charge, and if it's viewed as inadequate, it will start shutting down modules that it considers to be non-essential. And you can see these by warning signals on the dash, whether or not you have the Lariat and above, or maybe the XLT version of the dashboard it will show you a state of charge warning signal. The systems will try to shut down non-essential systems in order to conserve that battery power and allow you to get going. So think about all of the things that the truck does before you step in and start the engine. It's kind of staggering. As you approach the truck, you'll see and hear all kinds of things happening. The welcome lights activate, the fuel pump might prime itself, the door locks start to look for your unlock request. As you step in, the screens light up and go through the welcome sequence. All of this is running on 12 volt power and the charging system is not yet active until you hit the start button. One clue for normal state of charge is hearing the three note welcome chime through your main system audio. If the 12 volt system is low, you'll hear the three note welcome coming through your dash instead and it sounds like it's coming from a child's toy. Now that we've identified the problem, what can we do to stay ahead of the battery state of charge? I've seen so many forum and Reddit posts of truck owners with dead trucks due to a low state of charge of the 12 volt battery. I want to get ahead of this issue and not wait for it to strand me. This reminds me of one of my favorite commercial taglines, courtesy of Chuck Yeager. Never wait for trouble. Unfortunately, my truck does not offer any kind of battery monitoring on the screens other than the warnings that we just showed. The answer here is to proactively monitor the 12 volt battery using some form of third party instrumentation. Now, hooking up a live voltmeter seems to be a bit sketchy as you have to run the leads through the firewall. You can test these at the, the battery itself, but probably not a good idea to do this into the cabin. I have previously monitored the live state of charge of the 12 volt battery through an OBD2 monitor, but this will only show battery state of charge if the truck is on and running. This only shows 12 volt charging problems. It doesn't really show the state of the battery. So I went to a dedicated Bluetooth connected battery monitor, which I will link to in the description below. I will also show you how I installed it and how it operates. Now I can check my battery when the truck is off, which shows the true health of the 12 volt system and battery. I just need to be within about 20 feet of the truck to pull a status on the battery. Let's cover the installation of this battery monitor. Now it couldn't be any simpler. I mean, all we have to do is to hook up two leads to the battery terminals and then install an app on our smartphone. Let's get to it. Installation is pretty simple. What I'm doing, first of all, is cleaning off the top of the battery with some window cleaner, just making sure we get all the grease off of there and, and dirt and everything. I'm going to secure the battery monitor, which you can see in the lower left-hand corner. It's just a little plastic box. I'm going to use some industrial strength Velcro, which I picked up from Lowe's. 
Now I'm going to use a little bit of isopropyl alcohol to make sure there's no grease on top of the battery or anything else. Make sure the Velcro sticks literally forever to this. Okay, so we're going to make sure we're, uh, we clean the opposite side. Then let's put the Velcro on the back of the battery monitor as well as the top of the battery. So fairly simple. Hardest part is getting the backing off of the Velcro. So just secure it into position and then all we need to do is to affix the terminals black to the negative side and red to the positive side. Now if you notice what I'm doing, I don't want to loosen these nuts any further than I need to because I don't want to interrupt the voltage to any of the onboard systems, which may reset them. Also be careful of the reach of the swing of your wrench. Make sure that, especially as you get to the positive terminal, that you're not contacting any metal. Probably would be better to use a rubber wrench if you can find something, a rubber covered wrench or anything like that. Actually, afterwards, after I'm showing this video, I came back and cleaned things up just a little bit. I, I was not happy with how I routed the terminals because it wasn't able to allow the positive battery cover to seat properly. But I did put a couple of tie wraps on there to make sure that things were gonna stay as long as possible or as long as I needed them to for this. So it's a pretty quick installation. So this really is only gonna take you five to 10 minutes. Let's finish things up by showing you how easy it is to operate this battery monitor. Now that you have the hardware sensor installed, all we need to do now is to download the app so you can find this on the App Store or through Google Play. Okay, I'm gonna walk out to my truck right now. And as I'm walking out to the truck, look at the upper left-hand corner. You'll see the little red link. And that shows that it is not yet attached to the Bluetooth monitor. So I'm getting within a few feet of the truck now, and I'm starting to hear things turn on, and the Bluetooth should be turning on. There it is, there's the blue link, and it shows that my battery right now is 12.3 volts, 12.28, 2.7. You can see that there's a draw on it. I'm hearing the fuel pump turn on. I'm hearing all kinds of things happening with the truck. So there is a draw on that battery and it's actually starting to get a little low. Now watch what happens when I get into the truck and actually start this thing up. And I think you'll see a dramatic change as we turn it on. Now the engine does not need to be running for this. I'm just gonna turn on the switch here. And as soon as the truck turns on, notice what happens to the charging voltage. Now I'll talk about that in just a minute. But that is the, that's the, the basic nature of this monitor, is that you can look at your battery, the state of your battery, without the truck being on. And that's the most important thing with cold weather coming up. There goes the engine. I'm gonna finish up this video by giving you a couple of thoughts on using this battery monitor. So first of all, you wanna keep an eye on your battery. So there is enough range that I can light this thing up from my house. So I don't need to start the truck. I don't need to do anything. I just need to be within about 20 feet of the unit. And then what you'll wanna watch for is to make sure that it's actually attached via the Bluetooth. So in this example, it's not attached and it's just giving me the last value that the battery was at. But this one is definitely attached and it's giving me an accurate value. Also, what I'm starting to see is that just in the, the process of going through this, I'm seeing that the battery that I have, which is about a year and a half old, is starting to get a little bit weak. So I may be in the near future looking to replace this battery if I start to see more readings like this or when I come out on a cold day and it's below 12 volts, I'm gonna have issues down the road, definitely. So keep an eye on your battery with this monitor. That's what it's there for. Now, just to give you an idea how this all works, remember the power boost is a little bit different from most other trucks with a standard alternator. The way that the battery gets charged, the 12 volt battery, it's charged through 
the high voltage system. So the hybrid battery powers a DC to DC converter and as well as powering the, the motor, it also will power a 12 volt system. So that's why when you turn on the truck, you start charging that battery without the engine being running, which is kind of neat. So you can actually run things straight from your hybrid battery. This is why the Pro Power on board works like it does. It does not need the engine running for the Pro Power on board to work through this inverter. So this DC to DC inverter converter will also power and charge the 12 volt battery system. So again, if you approach the vehicle without it being on, you'll get native state of the charge of the 12 volt battery by itself. But the moment that you turn on the truck, you fire up the DC to DC converter. And as long as there is a state of charge on the hybrid battery, this should bring your state of charge up to somewhere in the 14 and a half volt level without the engine being on, just with the truck on itself. So that's how the charging system works. Now the absorbed glass mat battery, the AGM battery, 12 volt battery in the power boost. I found this state of charge chart here on the internet, so it must be correct. And I don't, I don't know if these levels are correct or not, but they appear to be pretty reasonable to me. So if I see a battery down to about 12 volts by itself, that is somewhat diminished. You want these to be somewhere around 12 and a half, 12.6 or higher if you can. And I've seen values all the way from 12, all the way up to somewhere around 12.6 for my battery. So again, I suspect that it may be getting a little bit on the weak side. So if you'd like to pick up one of these battery monitors, I've included a link in the video description below. Again, as always, thank you for watching this video. I get all of my ideas from viewers just like yourself. So if there's anything you'd like me to build into the next video for this channel, please let me know through the comments below. Thanks again. See you in the next video.